What's going on? Welcome to this amplifier gain setting video. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set the gains on all of your components. And in my case, I have a line out converter, I have an inline amplifier that's driving my indoor speakers, and I have an amplifier driving a 10 inch sub. Each of these components has its own individual gain settings. I believe that if you understand what gain is, you're gonna be better prepared to troubleshoot the system if something goes wrong. Gain is your sensitivity adjustment for the amplifiers. The gain is gonna tell the amplifier how sensitive it needs to be for the signal that it's getting. Let's pretend that you set out one day to make your own head unit and make your own amplifier. You build your head unit to put out a very specific voltage and you have the luxury of knowing exactly what that voltage is. So when you go to engineer your amplifier, you're using that exact knowledge of that voltage to set the internal gain of the amplifier so that it puts out the power that the amplifier is supposed to put out cleanly at that level. So whatever your head unit that you made up maxes out at in terms of voltage, you can set your amplifier to max out in terms of power at that voltage. So when you build this hypothetical amplifier and head unit, you don't have to put a gain dial on the amplifier because you already set the internal gain of the amplifier because you knew exactly what those numbers were and you built that amplifier only for that head unit. But let's say that now you want to build an amplifier that you can mass produce and sell millions of it. Well, now things are different because now you're not gonna know exactly what voltage is gonna be fed to that amplifier. So your amplifier very well could over amplify a signal that it gets or it could be too weak if the signal that that amplifier gets is considerably weaker than the signal that you originally designed it with. So you being a smart engineer, your solution to this problem is to put a gain adjustment on the amplifier and that gain adjustment is gonna allow your customers to set that gain themselves. So by allowing your customers to set the gain properly, they can still make use of the maximum power output of your amplifier for whatever components that they are driving. This amplifier right here is rated for 500 watts RMS when it's presented a two ohm load and it has an input sensitivity of a maximum of four volts. If I feed this amplifier a four volt signal, then I can get 500 watts RMS out of the amplifier if I have a two ohm subwoofer attached to it. That's your maximum level. So knowing that this amplifier right here can take that four volts and convert it into 500 watts RMS, I wanna make sure that I'm feeding this amplifier as close to those four volts as I can get. If I'm feeding it a considerably weaker signal, I'm gonna be forced to turn the gain up. And when you turn the gain up, you're also amplifying noise. So you want to make sure that you don't have to turn the gain up very much. Keep it in mind that if you exceed the maximum input sensitivity of the amplifier, the amplifier will start clipping and distorting the signal. It's not gonna make more power than what it's rated for, it's simply gonna send a very crappy signal to your speakers and it's gonna get hot and it's going to probably damage the speakers or damage itself. So if this amplifier had the gain internally set to give me a maximum power output at four volts, I'm never going to be able to get the maximum out of it if my head unit is only feeding it, say, three volts. But since I have the gain, what I'm essentially doing is telling the amplifier that instead of making maximum power at four volts, make it at three volts. So let's take a closer look at what's going on here. So here we have my line out converter. The line out converter is taking the speaker level inputs right here from the factory head unit. So these are the cables that are coming straight out of the head unit that normally would be plugged into the speakers. The amplifiers are made to work with a low pre-amplified voltage. This voltage right here is already amplified because it's meant to drive speakers. I want to bump that down so that the amplifiers do the amplification and not the head unit. I already did a video going over all of the features of the LC7i. So check out that video so you can see exactly what's going on and why I chose to do that. But just know that this line out converter is an active line out converter that is taking these high speaker level inputs and it's outputting a low level signal. This line out converter right here, has the ability to put out 8.5 volts max. 8.5 volts is actually a pretty high voltage. Neither of these amplifiers are made to work with a voltage that high. In fact, this amplifier has an input sensitivity maximum of four volts. And this inline amplifier right here is actually even lower at 2.8 volts RMS. So what I want to do is 
to adjust these three channels right here so that they don't put out more voltage than what the input of these two amplifiers is. I'm actually gonna make sure that the output here is as strong as it can be. So I wanna get as close to four volts and as close to 2.8 volts as I can here when I set my gains. The higher your source voltage coming in, the less sensitive that your amplifiers have to be and that means that you're going to cut down considerably on noise and your system is just going to sound better so to set the gains as i'm going to show you you're going to need a multimeter i think i bought this at either lowe's or home depot and they are very cheap there's really no excuse not to have one of these if you want to set this properly the only thing that you have to ensure is that the multimeter reads voltage ac so if you get one like this it might seem complicated it's really not the numbers just denote the range on the screen that it's going to show you so basically where the decimal point it's going to be and another thing that i recommend is that you make yourself something like this if you see right here all i did was take a rca cable that i had laying around and i exposed the leads and that just allows me to put the leads of the multimeter right to it very easily so that i can just unplug these down here and plug this in and i can take the reading without having to put the leads of the multimeter directly on there which can get a little screwy so we've reached the point where you're going to have to make a creative decision in this process in order to set the gains of your amplifiers you're going to need test tones and the test tones are going to allow you to set the gains in a controlled way because music is very dynamic and it has highs and lows so if you're measuring music with a voltage meter it's not going to work because it's going to just jump around and it's not going to be useful so we use that test tone that reference voltage because it's going to give you a solid voltage that you can manipulate and actually monitor through the multimeter if you're setting an amplifier that is meant to drive a subwoofer you know that that amplifier is only going to be playing very low frequencies so the test tone for that particular amplifier has to be 40 50 or 60 hertz so in my case i'm using a 40 hertz test tone for that particular amplifier now my inline amplifier right here that's meant to reproduce the full range of frequencies that the music has so for that amplifier i'm not going to use 40 hertz i'm actually going to use one kilohertz which is more representative of the kinds of frequencies that that particular amplifier is going to be reproducing if you look around the web on other videos and even on most websites most tutorials are going to tell you to use a zero decibel test tone and zero decibels is the baseline it's the highest level that music is recorded at so by using a zero decibel test tone you're actually setting up your amplifiers for the worst case scenario now that's theoretical right that's the perfect scenario a perfectly sampled piece of music that's recorded at a zero decibel level if you set it with zero decibels your amplifiers are going to play great they're going to give you maximum power and they're never going to clip however reality is different and music is recorded at very different levels personally i like listening to a lot of 90s music that is not the best quality and in those cases i know for a fact that music is nowhere near that zero decibel level so if i'm setting my amplifiers with that zero decibel um, source i'm leaving a lot on the table so I have to crank up the volume to, to get that full experience out of the music way more than I normally would whereas if I set my gains with a negative five decibel level I can actually reach fullness and richness in the music at a much lower volume and it just sounds so much better and I can really get the most out of my equipment but that's the reason why I went with negative five decibels some people actually go with negative 10 decibels I wouldn't go that crazy I think negative five is a good compromise but know that if you go negative five, if you start listening to music that is recorded at a very high level at that zero decibel mark and you crank up your volume, then you might start distorting the music. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna disconnect all of the outputs off of this line out converter because this is gonna be the first component that I am going to set. And I don't want this sending a hot signal to my amplifiers. I don't need the amplifiers plugged in for this portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug all of these before I even turn it on. So because I'm setting the line out converter first, I wanna make sure that these are all minimized. So I'm gonna minimize the gain adjustments on each of these all the way to the lowest position. So that's all I'm doing counterclockwise all the way. This particular line out converter has AccuBase, which is bass restoration for rolled off bass. And this is their default position. So I'm not gonna lower these. I'm gonna leave those right there in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the gain for channel three first and channel three is going to be this amplifier right here that's driving my subwoofer so i'm going to play the 40 hertz negative five decibel tone and i'm just going to put it on replay so that it's continuously sending that negative five decibel tone through these speaker leads right here 
into the line out converter. And I'm expecting the line out converter to take those high voltages and reduce them right here to a more appropriate voltage. If you remember this amplifier right here, maxes out at four volts. So I'm looking for four volts out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my homemade RCA cable here to one of the ports. It doesn't really matter which one, just pick one and plug it into it. Okay, so the car is on and the head unit is playing that 40 hertz tone at negative five decibels. My volume is set to 75% of its max. My equalizer settings are flat and the speed volume and all that extra stuff is turned off. So now it's time to actually read what we're having here and set our output level. It's super easy. All we're doing is turning on our multimeter to read voltage AC. Right now we're reading zero volts out of that output right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply turn this up until I get to four volts. Okay, I went past it. Four volts, so I'm good. If you notice right here, this particular line-out converter has a maximized light that allows you to set the gains out of the line-out converter just by sight and you use that maximized light and that's telling you when the output of the line-out converter is starting to get distorted. The maximized light, I'm gonna go ahead and ignore it and the reason why I'm ignoring it is because that maximized light is actually meant for music and because I'm not playing music through it, I'm playing a tone. The tone is way more likely to maximize the output of this line-out converter than regular music is so right now if I was playing regular music that maximized light would probably be blinking so right now at 75% volume I am outputting no more than 4 volts out of that right there I know now that when I set the gains of the amplifier that I am not going to be feeding it a signal that it is not meant to reproduce and I'm not going to be clipping so now that we have our head unit playing that thousand hertz at negative five decibels, I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to channel two right here, and I'm gonna set the gains of my front speakers. Again, I'm reading zero, so I'm simply going to increase the gain right there. The voltage that we're looking for for this amplifier is 2.8 volts. So I don't wanna go over 2.8 volts on this output right here. It's a very fine adjustment. So three volts is fine, it's close enough. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set the rear gain right here. And now I'm going to go ahead and increase it until I see 2.8. Okay, the output settings of my line-out converter are perfect and as high as I can go before hitting my amplifiers. That's gonna ensure that I only have to raise the gain on these amplifiers, the minimum amount to get the proper wattage that I want out of them. So let's move on to doing that. For this next step, I actually do want to send the signal from the line-out converter to the amplifier. We're gonna be setting the gain of my main amplifier right here that's driving my subwoofer. I don't want the subwoofer connected for this next step. These two cables right here are going out to the subwoofer in the trunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect them. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug the amplifier back to where it goes. So the first step is gonna be turning our gain all the way down so we want it as low as it goes. I'm gonna keep the phase at zero. The frequency in Hertz, I'm not as concerned about that. You can go ahead and put that somewhere in the middle, but this is just your low pass filter right here. The punch equalizer, I think it adds fake bass to, to the system. It just doesn't sound right. So make sure that that's turned all the way off. If you have a remote punch level right here, this is just a remote gain adjustment. Whatever you set your gain to, your maximum gain to right here, the maximum level on the knob is gonna denote that. You have two options to do this. You can either just unplug it and set your gains that way, or you can go to the actual remote punch knob and set it to maximum gain. That way, the reading that you get out of here is accurate. I have the volume set to 75%, and I have that negative five decibel, 40 hertz tone going through the system right now coming out of here and go into the amplifier. So to find your target voltage is actually quite easy. Pull up the calculator on your phone and then go ahead and access the scientific calculator within it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right there. So this is a scientific calculator right here. So to find your target voltage, all you have to do is find the square root of your amplifier's maximum RMS power multiplied by the resistance of the subwoofer that you're gonna attach to it. That's only the case if you're actually matching your amplifier and your subwoofer. If you happen to have a subwoofer that puts out less power than the amplifier that you're attaching to it, then you're gonna use the maximum RMS power output of your sub. In my case, I'm using a 500 watt RMS amplifier and I'm mating that with a 500 watt RMS subwoofer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the square root symbol right there 
and then I'm gonna multiply 500. The impedance of my subwoofer is two ohms, so I'm gonna multiply that by two, and that's gonna give me my target voltage, which is 31.6 volts. So you take this reading right at the terminal. Let's see what I got. Okay, so I'm over and I am already at the minimum gain. So what I can do in this case is just turn down the output level on the line of converter a little bit, which is what I'm doing right now to get that voltage to what it needs to be, which is 31.6. It's a very, very fine adjustment and even a small movement over here uh, makes it jump quite a bit. So 31.5, whatever it is right now, 31.4, I'm happy with that. So I can consider the gain set properly on this amplifier based on my taste. So setting the gains on the inline amplifier right here is a little bit different because we cannot unplug the speakers off of it in order to do gain settings like we did on this amplifier right here. So the first step is turning down the gain adjustment on both channels, the, the rear and the front. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all of the outputs from the line converter and I'm gonna set one channel at a time. So first I'm gonna do the front speakers. So I'm just gonna plug in the front speakers. Now with the front speakers plugged in, we have to start playing a signal through the system. And because we're not messing with multimeters to set the gains of this amplifier right here, we're gonna need to find a music source. So you wanna make sure that whatever you play is of very high quality when you're setting the gains. The first step is actually turning up the volume on your head unit until you hear distortion and then backing off until the distortion goes away. In some head units, you could actually max out the volume before you hear distortion. So you might actually not hear distortion at all. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the music. So it's probably gonna get a little loud here for a split second. And then I'm gonna turn up the gain on the amplifier while the music is up until I hear distortion. And then I'm gonna back it away. I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but I could definitely hear the distortion when I turned up the gain too high. So I went ahead and backed it up. And now I know that my front channels are good. I'm gonna do the same thing with the rear channels now. Okay. All right, so again, I could definitely clearly hear the distortion there when I went too far and I backed it up. So now theoretically speaking, my gain should be um, pretty good. So I do wanna mention something about this inline amplifier right here. This inline amplifier has a high pass filter. You can see them right there. So because we're not driving subwoofers with this inline amplifier right here, I don't wanna send very low frequencies to my speakers that could possibly damage it because the speakers are not meant to reproduce sub bass frequencies. That's what the subwoofer is for. So what I wanna do is actually set the high pass filter above the minimum that my speakers play. You can look up the specifications of the speakers that you have installed in your car and just go above it. I have mine right now set to 80 Hertz. So now all of the gains are set in all of my components. And now we have to make sure that everything is working exactly as we intended to. So what you have to do, get yourself some music that you like to listen to. And then we're going to crank up the volume and see what it sounds like when all the components are working together. And I'm hoping that it sounds great. So let's do that right now. It sounds great. It actually sounds fantastic. I was right on the mark with all the gains that I set. I just had a, you know, 75% volume and, you know, I don't usually go, you know, any more than that anyways. And I didn't detect any sort of clipping or distortion of any kind. It sounded clean throughout. The sub is perfectly balanced with the system. And I, of course, retain the option of turning down the gain if I happen to be playing a song that is really, really bass heavy. So that's exactly what you want out of your system when you're done. I've done this several times and it works. It's basically a foolproof method of doing this. If you use a zero decibel tone, then uh, it's still gonna sound good, but it's gonna be a lot lower. You might not get everything out of your equipment and you might have to turn up the volume quite a bit to actually feel the system really come alive. So that's why I don't like setting it with zero decibels. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap all this up, 
put my car back together and move on to the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you still have questions, ask them in the comment section and I'll see you next video. Take care.